But I make the analogy to a group of people trying to decide what color to paint a room. Um, and somebody comes up with the idea of, of beige. Well, nobody loves beige, but nobody hates beige either. So it becomes a real easy decision to make. And then you have a new problem. You have a new room. And you go back to your old solution and say, if that works, you know, maybe that becomes an easy uh, way to get a decision uh, made quickly. But the downside of this, making decisions that way, is you're, you're limiting the possibility of new thoughts and new ideas. And you end up with projects that have no real meaning, no real soul to them. And we all have souls, and I think that we walk around and we're looking for interaction. And the only way to have a real response from something, real relationship with something, is for it to um, have something that relates to you. And I think we're always looking for that, whether it's there or not. So when it's not there, I think it leaves a sense of uh, emptiness. And we end up with this world um, of kind of empty objects. And so when I uh, became an architect, and I really sought to find projects, to find uh, ways that I could, could really do something different and find ways um, to kind of bring out this uh, more human connection and maybe new ways of, of looking at things. So um, what I'm going to show you is, is uh, some projects um, to try and demonstrate that, try and create layers of meaning uh, that create a more, more human connection. Um, this is shoe spine. So this is an object for uh, holding shoes. And the idea is that uh, this object receives a shoe like, like I would receive, receive a shoe from you, that I would kind of grab it and hold it like this and have a way. It's a, it's a series of these little uh, ribs down the spine. But uh, again, it would kind of receive the shoe and find a way to display it in a way that kind of shows off its beauty and shows you what it is. And then when you need it, you come and, and can, can kind of pull it out. And this kind of gentle curve, uh, again, kind of creates this, you know, obviously comes from the human spine. But the idea that there's some humanness to this object um, and that it can relate to you. In here, this, um, what I wanted to do was give uh, Louis Vuitton a facade on the store that presented their brand. So there's several uh, issues here. There's, um, they want to maintain the offices upstairs. So there's, you know, kind of the quality of, of the environment upstairs to think about. Then there's the experience of people walking around this retail environment. Um, and then, you know, there's this need for, for Louis Vuitton to obviously uh, reinforce their brand innovative facade. So the idea was to create this kind of single fin. Um, has this kind of gentle rotation to it. And then it's repeated. It's the same fin. It just gets repeated across the facade. But it creates this interesting moiré effect as you start to move around it. So here this is kind of coming down a side street looking at it. And you can see how this fin kind of changes and interacts with you as you move around it. And then as you get towards the, the corner of this uh, intersection, it creates this kind of solid billboard that gives us a way of presenting uh, Louis Vuitton's brand. So again, it, it, it's a way of creating a dynamic, uh, something interesting that is compelling that interacts with you as you move around it. Then it's also about maintaining the quality and environment of the people in those offices uh, above. So when I got my license and became an architect, this is one of the first projects that I started working on. And it was shortly after Hurricane Katrina. And this was the solution to disaster housing, which is their FEMA trailers. And uh, there became you know, a real issue with these trailers because people you know, started staying in them for extended periods of time and started getting sick. There became real health concerns about the formaldehyde in these trailers. And so went out looking for a, another solution. And so the idea was that these kind of foldable uh, modules of a house, and that you could store these modules 
and a warehouse until you needed them, until there was a disaster. They could be brought out quickly. And uh, they're divided in half, so one half fits on the, the trailer uh, of the truck. So you can kind of bring out, set down half, set the other half down, connect them in the middle, lift it up, pin the sides, and it becomes an uninhabitable shelter. And then if someone needs to stay in them for an extended period of time, uh, you can make that happen. Uh, so the layout's very simple. Uh, the, that red part at the bottom is an additional module to shed a larger family. But the whole idea is that you give people the ability, communities the ability, to um, more quickly get back to a sense of normalcy. Um, they can go, you know, live in this like you would a normal house, go back to your daily routine, and hopefully uh, begin to kind of recover uh, from the tragedy of what you've seen and what you've been through. And then, you know, called this lift home. And, you know, I thought there's something special about the, the movement that this thing makes, that it would not only uh, kind of provide a practical solution, but it would lift people's spirits. That you quickly see something come in to this disaster-ridden area and, and be erected and look like a home and something that it could help your, your community uh, gain a sense of calm and a sense of hope uh, sooner uh, rather than later. This is a project I'm working on right now. This is a public art project in Fort Worth. And uh, it's a historic neighborhood, a historic district. And they wanted some uh, place for gathering in, in a park um, and uh, some tables and chairs. And uh, in this aerial photograph here, there's, uh, the park is, is the middle block. And what I found out when I started working on this project was that there used to be houses there. Uh, that aerial photo was taken, I think, in 1953 or 1956. And, uh, so, but those houses were torn down somewhat mysteriously around 1990, right when the historic district was formed. Um, and so I thought it would be interesting with this project to find a way to reference those houses, to create a memory uh, in a place where they so value uh, their historic architecture, create a memory of that architecture for the community. So I went looking around uh, the neighborhood uh, for, you know, what do we key in on? What is kind of an appropriate way to honor uh, that architecture in those houses? And what I keyed in on was the steps leading up to the porch, the stoop, and the idea that at the sidewalk it's public, inside the house is private, but that place right in between is where community really happens. That's where people interact, and that's where you get to know your neighbors. Um, so these pieces became a reflection of that stoop. And so it's a step table with seating on either side. We don't have the porch, and it is Texas, so we need some shade, so we plant a tree. And create a renewed place uh, for community interaction. So here's a view of the park now, and we can never find photos of these houses. You know, they pretty much disappeared. But you know, I laid this, these uh, houses in this photograph, so you kind of see how the rhythm uh, might have looked. And then um, these tables and uh, benches uh, sit in the park like that, again, creating this kind of memory of where those stoops, where those places of historic uh, community interaction uh, took place. But I really liked that it, it created this, this kind of hint, this kind of uh, latent memory of that historic fabric as you uh, look at the installation. This is the last project I'm going to present. This is a Holocaust memorial uh, for Atlantic City. When I was doing research for this project, I ran across a passage in a book uh, that talked about a Jewish poet. And it, it said that he was in a concentration camp, and, and as he was being dragged away by the Nazis, he exclaimed, right, Jews right. And at the time, uh, there were news reports about countries in the Middle East denying that the Holocaust had ever existed. And it occurred to me that the reason that the Holocaust is undeniable, one of the reasons, is that they did write. And those accounts of those events that happened in the darkest places were brought to light by those documents and by their proliferation. And so this memorial became a way of celebrating those accounts and their proliferation. 
so it sits on the ocean side of the boardwalk, and it's you know, these stacks of pages that uh, appear to blow in the direction of the prevailing wind. But there's more to it than that. Uh, in between these stacks of pages, there are figures visible in the voids. And I really fell in love with the idea that there are these layers of meaning that you could appreciate um, the idea of honoring those pages. And you can even appreciate the aesthetic of these kind of curvy uh, pages blowing in the wind. But then one day you might walk by and, and catch a glimpse of somebody that reminded you of your brother, your father, your son, or your daughter. And there's an image of a man in the center of that uh, image. You can see that figure. But they're life-size figures. So again, you, you begin to not only appreciate these, the honoring these accounts, but what they contain, which is the memory that, that there is something missing. There's an absence of these people. There's an absence of their descendants that should be walking around the boardwalk. And here's some uh, snapshots of some other uh, figures in the voids within the memorial. There's a boy standing uh, here on the left. There's a man with a cane in the middle. And uh, there's another young boy walking on the right. So we made a scale sculpture to demonstrate the concept with uh, three stacks of paper. And in between these stacks and the voids, uh, there's a little boy uh, and a little girl. You can see the little boy there on the, on the left and the girl on the right. So in this next series of photos, uh, you'll see what it might feel like to look and discover that figure.